Alright, so now let's uh, tackle two two things separately now. The, uh, the guy at the kilt is wearing what looks like a sweater. Uh, so we're going to we're going to use a, I think, Vallejo Gray Green on that. Uh, we're going to make a socks match that. So we'll do that as a base coat. And then after that we're going to jump right into the camel patterns on the rest of the the uh, uh, soldiers. So let's just do the gray green first. This is uh, I think a fairly good color. It's kind of like a stone gray um, which appear, which is really what it kind of looks like. But Alright, so we'll just make his sock completely this color. So, alright, so there he is. Okay, oops, missed the spot. He got a little sloppy and got on his leg at one point, so I was going to have to go over and touch up with the uh, flesh. That won't be such a bad thing, though. Alright, so let's dive into the camo. The camo uh, consists of three more colors. We're going to have beige brown, flat brown, and the reflective green. Now, beige brown seems to be a larger proportion. Is going to be, should, I think that'll be the one I'm going to start with. And then I'll add these as accents. So I'm going to take a look, do one figure uh, with all three colors, and I'll show you just what it looks like and how you go about doing it. So just go ahead and grab a standing figure. And this is only going to be on the, sh on the jacket. So you just, as you're doing this, it's just, it's 
literally just find a spot and paint it. And as I'm doing this, I'm not seeing a lot of... Okay, on my arms I'm seeing a little better contrast. And it's okay to put what I would consider too much because um, you're going to be covering other areas with uh, the other two colors. And so if you put on too much of the any one color, you just go over, paint over that color with one of the other ones you're about to put on. And that will help uh, blend it in much better. There's the beige brown. Give it a second coat just to make it stand out a little bit more. All right, now wash this brushes a bit. I'm going to go over it with now the flat brown, which is much darker. Just dabbing some on various points. Probably help if I put it on the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that's pretty good, but I want to touch up a little bit more. Do the same thing with the reflective green. brush it in different ways to get it some okay. alrighty so there we go now it's wet so it's gonna be a little it's, it's the contract is pretty contrast is kind of stark right now Definitely gonna put some more back up here, back of his neck, a little more. Make these a little bit larger, make the patches, the green blend in a little bit more. So instead of it being a dot, it'll be more of a, a patch, an area, which is very much like the origin, the actual pattern. All right, much better. Okay. All right. 
So I'm just going to do that with the rest, and we'll take a look at them when, when they're done with that section. All right, that's done. So here's the camo pattern. As you can see. I know it looks kind of stark right now, but remember, this is just base coating. There's still more, a lot more work to be done. Uh, to kind of summarize where we are, we've got a base coat on pretty much everything except for the hat, the beret basically, and the weapons. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and use the uh, maroon red to go ahead and do all the berets, do the uh, the main cut, uh, main coat. Now, before I do this, I do want to kind of walk through and remind everyone, in case I haven't mentioned it yet, there's a lot left to paint, uh, detail-wise, right? So, all that comes after the base coating is done and the washing is done, at least the way I do it. So, uh, it may look kind of strange right now. Uh, there might be parts missing, for example, the, uh, the black band underneath the beret that is still tan right now and it's going to stay tan until uh, the detail painting comes toward the end. So we're going to do the red mar or the maroon berets and then we're going to move on from there to touch the guns. I'll go ahead and show you that as well. So, maroon red. Alright, now that I got the smocks and berets done. Okay, now it's onto the weapons. Now I'm going to use, uh, like I said, I'm going to, whoops, wrong one. I'm going to use gunmetal gray, not German gray, but gunmetal gray, because I want to give it, right out of the gate, I want to give it a, sh a good shine. I figured uh, washing it will end up uh, darkening up a little bit, dulling it down a bit, and if I need to, I can dull it with some German gray. But right now, it's just a matter of going through and painting just the gun part. I'm not going to do the, the tubing, the piping here. This is more of a hose, so I'm going to save that for a different moment. That's going to be, until then, used, it'll be my handle. <clears throat> so, all the weapon types are going to be the same thing. The backpack and these uh, armored hoses, or insulated hoses, well, those are going to get uh, a green I'll show you a little bit later. Okay, alright, so let's I'll progress with that and we'll see what things look like after that. Okay, so there's the gunmetal. It's very, it's bright, but again, a wash will probably take care of that. So, we'll let those completely dry now. I figure we can go ahead and move on to the actual, uh, the packs and the uh, armored cables. Now, one of the things that's I've seen you know most equipment German or sorry British equipment that this is the pieces that um, you know whether it's their flame thrower pack or uh, Piat uh, light mortar it's a uh, a shade of green that I think is pretty closely matched by uh, olive gray Vallejo's olive gray so that's that's what I'm going to be using for these. Uh, again, go with what you think is uh, best. I know that what I often do, uh, you know, as I mix the paints to get it exact, but this is probably the closest I've found to what, you know, the, the samples of, color samples I've got for those weapons. So, <clears throat> all we're going to do is base coat those with this olive gray. Sorry, yeah, olive gray. That's what it's called. And now, given the fact that these are these packs, you're not going to see the back side. I figure the best way to do this is taking forceps like this. You can, you know, use that little nub, that pin there. It's used to lock it in the back. Just go ahead and hold that. And now you're ready, basically, to paint. I 
Uh, some go with a re reflective green, but I personally like this color. And then similarly with the the pipes, the armored pipes, you do you can do the same thing with like tweezers holding one end. You'll have to take do this in a couple steps because you're gonna have to put it down after you paint it, and then go back over it with the side that you know that was behind the, the tweezers, right? So I'll go ahead and just lay the paint down real quick. And lay the piece down. And we'll go through the rest of the parts just exactly like that. Alright, so they're looking pretty good. The way they're sitting right now. Uh, at this point, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to basically put all of the weapons and equipment on. Uh, now essentially, they're all base coated. Now I'm ready to put them, put them on, the guns together, get them completely built wash and then start doing some of the detail paints and highlighting. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just like, you know, with some of these guns, I'll go ahead and put them on and I uh, will show you what they look like when they're completely assembled. Alright, I have all the pieces together now. Let's take a quick, just a really quick look. Um, the Blevin rifles come with a hose to the back. The Blevin carbines come with the insulated hose, according to the instructions. What I don't see, is, or don't know why, is that there's a whole bunch of other insulated hoses and regular Blevin rifle pipes that, uh, I don't know, they're in there. But I was able to find the ones that belong to each of the, each of the correct models. So, now that they're together, the next step is to tie in... Here, let me show you this one. Tie in the camouflage pattern on the part of the body into the part of the arm that was left, that was just recently attached. So that's the next step. <clears throat> Once I do that, now I'm going to go through, I'm going to do the details. Now the details are going to be the facial hair and the hair, as well as the black band on the berets. Alright, so that's essentially the next step. Once you've done that, you've completed the base coating of the models. And at that point, you can go ahead and do a wash. And I'll show you the the, the, the results of this, the final base coating, and then we'll get to the washes. Alright, alrighty. It's all done. Okay, so you know, very quickly. Okay, again here. All right. Got a little bit of beard there going on. The band on the, the uh, this guy just has hair. There's his hair and there's the band on the beret. Um, notice little spots like that that I may have missed. Uh, you can go ahead and give take care of those now, but uh, there aren't a lot. You just you can go ahead and c cover up any errors you may have made, but other than that, these are all completely base coated. Okay. Now, don't worry too much about some of the smaller crevices. There were areas where may, it may look like there's a little bit of uh, light patches coming through. The next step is going to kind of blend it all together and take care of some of that. Now, given the fact that these are uh, human, we'll call them human miniatures, right? We're going to follow the kind of the same approach that, that you know I use, the same way Warlord does. He happens to use a strong tone, a army painter strong tone as the wash. Now, army painter makes a few different things that you can use, and. <clears throat> It's a lot. Of, to be honest, this is all about personal preference. So let's really kind of take a quick look at what they do offer in the shading or washing perspective. 
these are the ones uh, I usually use flesh tone or sorry soft tone on light colored miniatures uh, like the eighth army ones I'm doing or like my elves I use a soft tone you can always add more strong tone is generally the good one to use normal human shading but flesh wash is a nice one to use just on the flesh areas so what I'm gonna do is this actually is a little bit warmer color um, a little more I'll call it reds in there this is definitely a lot darker um, you would not wash the entire model with this just to wash the skin areas now, there's not much in the way of skin on these models so I'm just gonna stick with the strong tone okay that way as I'm going through this, I'm blending the entire model together. The strong tone is kind of like Agrax Earthshade. There's, I don't see a lot of difference between the two as far as the in color intensity. I believe there might be a, a shade or two difference between the two, but for all intents and purposes, you can use either one. I'm going to apply that to the entire model except for the beret. The reason for that is that Army Painter also makes colored uh, washes, much like this blue tone. Uh, they make green and red as well. So I'm going to use actually a red tone on that to add some shade variation. And I'm especially going to pay attention to areas where the, there's a fold. So like here on the front of the model, the beret folds over. I'm going to try to make sure there's, that the wash gets under there and is a little uneven on the top so that it provides some shading. All right, so I want to kind of show you that before I do that, the one thing I like to do is to protect the models. Uh, I generally do this after the base coat and after the uh, before the wash just to make sure because I'll be handling this and I want to drop it and nick things so I'm going to give them all a uh, gloss coat or sorry uh, not a gloss a dull coat using testers dull coat to give it a good varnish enamel varnish that won't obscure detail and it won't fill in crevices unless you really pour it on heavy which you don't want to do and just spray it just to give a little bit of a seal to it it will also prevent a lot of staining to the paints that goes because with these flat finish Vallejo paints uh, one of the things you're going to have now you may want it is the wash will actually stain the entire model which will bring darken the entire model down which is something you may want to do but because these are metal miniatures I like to give them a, a gloss coat first and then I'll hit it with the with that wash the wash won't end up uh, darkening the paints paint colors as much, but it will definitely fill the crevices, so you get some more of that contour. Alright, so let's take a look as, uh, as the models, as I'm going to go ahead and duck with them, we'll be back and I'll walk you through, actually show you how I do the washing. Alright.